Hello everyone and welcome to NNS Explained. My name is Andrew and I work in the product team at Definity. In the first episode, Laura explained how the NNS works on a high level and why it is important for the ICP ecosystem. And in today's video, this is more of a practical session, I would like to walk you through how to create an internet identity, uh, sign into the NNS tab, and how to get ICP on the NNS tab to stake for later. Um, so I'm on the NNS tab, which is nns.ic0.app. Here I click sign in with internet identity. And if I don't have one, I will be prompted to create a new internet identity. So create internet identity and create a passkey. A pass, pass keys are devices, uh, both it could be a laptop like a MacBook or phones that have security chips in them that can sign messages. Um, this is so, so that whenever you sign in, it's your physical device that, that signs you into the NNS tab, for example. And an internet identity works with, um, with many ICP-based uh, Web3 tabs. So here I create a passkey. And as I said, I have a MacBook Pro, which has a built-in fingerprint sensor. So I'll just use that. And I have a capture. There you go. And this is your internet identity number or internet identity anchor, as it used to be called. It is important that you save this number because you will have to use this later and your computer will remember or your browser will remember the number for the next sign-in. However, if you clear the cache or you have a different device, then it will be, you will have to remember the, um, your internet identity number. So make sure you write it down somewhere safe uh, so that you have it later. It's not crucial to keep this number private as people need access to your physical device in order to log into your, um, to the NNS staff, for example. So I saved it, continue. And I'm already logged into the, or I'm signed in with my internet identity. But before we move on, let me go to identity.ic0.app, which is where I can manage my internet identity. This is the number that I got before. So I'm signing quickly. It's important that you, when you create a new internet identity that you want to use later, you first, as I said before, you save this um, this number, but also that you manage your pass keys properly, which means you should add multiple devices so that even if one of your devices gets lost or stolen, you still have access using another one. And give them, give proper names for these devices so that you remember which one is which. For example, here I have a MacBook Pro 16-inch. And normally I would add my phone or a tablet or any other device that, that I have. So I always have access to my internet identity. And also it's very, very important that you enable the recovery phrase or seed phrase as it's also called. Create a seed phrase and write this down somewhere very safe. First, no one should see, no one should have access to these 24 uh, words as this is kind of a master password that allows anyone complete access to your internet identity and therefore your NNS account, which you may have ICP stored in later for staking. So write down both the, this number and also these 24 words and save it, uh, save it somewhere properly. And for today's video, I will not do this. To save a bit of time. Okay, so now that I have my internet identity written down, device or two, and I have my seed phrase enabled. And then I can go back to the NNS tab. When the tokens page, I have Internet Computer ICP. And on the main ICP, this is my ICP subaccount ID. And I want to use this to send ICP to. I have some ICP right now on Coinbase. So I'll just use that. Max. I'll paste this in. You can use any exchange or to, to acquire ICP and send to the NNS. I have Coinbase, so for, for me, this is um, convenient. I'll show in a second a list of exchanges that allow, that, that support ICP. All right. And since ICP has one to two second finality, I should see my ICP. Yes, there it is. So, Everything is ready for me to start staking ICP in the next episode. 
But before we wrap up today's video, let me show you where you can find this list of exchanges that support ICP. Here's ICP on CoinMarketCap. And on the exchanges section, you can scroll down and see all the exchanges that support ICP. It's important that before you, you purchase ICP, you, you check whether the exchange supports sending and receiving ICP to external wallets. And not just because some exchanges only support buying and selling ICP within the exchange, but not to send to external wallets. And it's important in this case, if we want to participate in the governance of, of ICP, that we have, uh, we can send ICP to the NNS DEP wallet. Um, and that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. And then in the next video, we'll talk about how to stake. See you next time. Bye.